Hi folks, welcome to this video on glycogen loading, also known as uh, carbo loading, but it's more technical term is uh, glycogen loading. So, uh, what are the key things that we need to know about this? Well, there are three key things about it. What are we trying to do with uh, glycogen loading? It's only endurance athletes who are going to do this process. You can store around about 90 minutes, maybe two hours worth of glucose and glycogen in your body. Um, so that's easy going to last you a game of football, a game of netball, game of basketball, hockey, things like that. What happens if your event goes over an hour and a half, two hours plus? What if you are a triathlete? And Iron What if you're into the Ironman competitions? What if you're a Tour de France cyclist? What if you're a marathon runner? You need to be able to store more glycogen. So glycogen loading, we are loading glycogen into the system, is for endurance athletes only. Um, its aim is to increase glycogen levels in our muscles and in our liver in order so that we can delay fatigue. The classic line they give for marathon runners is when they've hit the wall. Hit the wall means that you have run out of glycogen. Okay, you are, or you're perilously close to running out of glycogen. And that's when you get jelly legs and you see these people in the London Marathon not walking properly. If they can glycogen load, they can store more glycogen and they will avoid hitting the wall. In other words, they will delay fatigue. Okay, so there are three key things about it. There are two methods that we can use to do glycogen loading. Both have the pros and cons, so we're gonna look at each one in turn now. Right, so method one is related to this graph here. Now, as you can see, these are days one to seven on the bottom. Now, day seven, and I'm just gonna quickly add this on so we know what it is. Day seven, that is, let's say it's a marathon, that is race day. That is the day of the London Marathon. Okay, so that's Sunday. We come all the way back across Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. Now, what do you do? The aim of method one is to actually reduce glycogen levels in your body. We're trying to get rid of all the glycogen in your body. And you might be thinking, hang on, I thought we were trying to store more. We are going to, but via this method. What are we going to do? Okay, we're going to do the following. We're going to do that in the first few days. Now, when we say the first few days, we're talking about days one to three, one to four. We are going to eat low carbohydrate diet. We're going to eat virtually no carbohydrates. In fact, some people try to avoid eating carbs altogether. They eat fats, they eat protein, but they don't eat carbs. But at the same time, I'm going to continue to exercise. So what we could essentially say here is what we're going to do is, if, the, if I'm going to draw a line on the graph here, this is our carbohydrate intake during the first few days, okay? So the purple line is the carbohydrate intake. In contrast to that, the blue line is our exercise level, okay? So the blue line represents how much we're exercising. The purple line is representing um, the uh, carbohydrate intake of our diet. And as you can see, what's happening as a result... Well, we are just ruining the amount of carbohydrate in our system. We're really reducing it. We are reducing the glycogen levels in our muscles. That's what we're going to do on days one to three, one to four. What we're then going to do is this. We're then going to taper our training. We're going to reduce our training. So our training was at the top here. Now we're going to virtually bring it down to nothing at all. Okay. And at the same time, we are going to massively increase our carbohydrate intake. Okay during those final few days. Now, what that is going to achieve is something very, very important. It's going to achieve something called super compensation. Okay, what does that mean? It means the body is forced into storing more glycogen. Your body likes normality. It likes normal things. What you've done in the first part of this week, is you have smashed in a few high training sessions and eaten no carbohydrates. Your body hates that. It's like running out the petrol tank in your car. It can't function properly. So when you then dramatically reduce your training and increase your carbohydrate intake, your body says, thank God for that, store everything. Store every bit of carbohydrate, every bit of glycogen that comes into the system. So whereas normally you'd be able to store maybe... 90 minutes or two hours worth of glycogen with a, norm, with, with, a, with a normal diet and a normal daily routine, you've forced your body into storing three and a half, maybe four hours worth of glycogen. 
because it's stored extra because it doesn't know if you're ever going to do this again. It doesn't know if you're ever going to massively increase your training and massively reduce your carbohydrate intake. So it stores more and we call that process super compensation where the body is forced into storing more glycogen. So that is method one, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this writing now so we can then just have a look at a couple of advantages and disadvantages of this method. What can we say about it then? What are the advantages? Well, you definitely store more glycogen. Okay, that's a big plus point. You need more water to store glycogen. So you need to increase your water, your fluid intake, um, and that can help in storing more glycogen. I'll just quickly bullet point each of these. So more water to store glycogen. That helps storage. Okay. But the downside, so let's change the colour of the pen. It's a seven day process. You feel massively fatigued in early to midweek. By the time you get to Wednesday, Thursday, you are struggling. You've been training a lot on eating virtually no carbohydrates, which is a bad thing. And here's the key thing. You're actually going to use protein slash muscle tissue, because that's what protein is, for energy. So a few days before your marathon, you're actually using some of your muscle tissue to keep you going because you're not eating enough carbohydrates. So there's a few pros and cons. You know, this is, but again, this isn't something you're doing every week. It's, you know, it's, it's for these one-off ultra-endurance events. But because there are some cons to it, there's another method that we can use, and we're just going to quickly look at that now. Method two, what can we say? Well, this isn't a seven-day process. It's the day before. So straight away, there's an advantage over the previous method. Is you just do this one day before you, uh, you've got your marathon. So if you're doing the marathon on the Sunday, you will do this on the Saturday. Okay. What you do is you do a three-minute high-intensity activity. So this guy here is doing a three-minute blast out on a rowing machine. Three minutes as hard as he can for no longer than three minutes, right? Well, what is the benefit of this? What it does is it opens what we call a carb window. Three minutes of doing high intensity activity, your body is shocked. It goes, what, where, where did that come from? So if you, it opens a carb window. So if you eat any carbs now, you will store them. You will, you will store as many as you can eat, okay? So what you've got to do is you've got to immediately eat carbs. And here's the, one of the downsides within 20 minutes because the carb window doesn't stay open for very long. And the, obviously the downside is, realistically, how much carbohydrate can you eat in 20 minutes? Not as much as what you could over a two or three day period in the previous method. So here's where the advantages of one and the disadvantages of the other and vice versa. Okay. Um, so as we've said there, the advantage of this method is you could just do it the day before. Obviously, you're not going to have any muscle damage or protein damage because you're not using protein tissue or muscle tissue, sorry, to as an energy source because you've not hammered your body for seven days. This is a day before procedure. It's three minutes high intensity activity. You're not doing three or four days of long distance running with virtually no carbohydrates in your system. It opens a carb window. You eat those carbs, you store the extra amount, but realistically, how many carbs can you eat in 20 minutes? Not many. There's a couple of general downsides to both these methods. You need to increase, as we mentioned on the previous side, water intake to help store extra carbohydrates. Well, what's an obvious downside to both these methods then? You're going to have some bloating. Okay, you're going to feel a little bit bloated, a little bit heavier, things like that. Um, and like we said, you know, with your previous method as well, the key disadvantage 
was the feeling tired in the first part of the week to midweek of your major event, which isn't always great. It's not good for your self-esteem either. So they're the two methods of glycogen loading. You need to be able to describe them and you need to be able to say the pros and cons of each one. Good luck with it, folks.